Welcome knitters, I'm Jana with Pearl Together and it's cast on day for our felted clog knit along. I'm really excited about these. I, I'm still excited about them. I've made dozens of pairs, but I still just find them super satisfying because it's a quick knit and then it felts and it's so cozy and they last a long time, especially if you don't wear them outside. So if you haven't gotten your yarn yet, don't worry. The videos will be here indefinitely. We'll be in here in the groups to help you along if you have any questions. This is a paid, a purchased pattern. So I'll be showing you various techniques rather than walking you through line by line because you need to purchase the pattern. But you know, you can ask us questions in the group. No screenshots, please, because that violates copyright law. But ask questions in the group. If you're messed up on a certain row, uh, you can retype a little snippet of that and we can certainly help, help you out. So in the Facebook group, the Ravelry group, the links are down below in the video description. Okay, if you don't have your yarn yet, go check out Needlepoint Joint. I will put the link down below for that. They have several really good feltable wools and options for you to choose from. I happen to be knitting with yarn that I already have because my mom gave it to me, so I'm making slippers for her. But the other thing I'm gonna tell you is that I'm gonna make two pair, okay? I'm gonna make two different slippers on this video because one of them I'm going to knit as the pattern instructs, and then the other one I'm going to knit with my own personal little tweaks that I'll explain as we go along. So one of them will be knitted in the round as shown in the instructions and then the other one I'm gonna knit back and forth. Now there's a couple reasons I do that. One is because I have all these works in progress going at a time. I don't always have the correct length cable freed up to do the slippers. So I like to knit them back and forth. Um, it just seems a little easier sometimes. And then I find that my joining in the round is sometimes sloppy when I'm knitting with such large needles and a bigger gauge. And so I like knitting them back and forth and then I just seam up the end or the, the place at the back of the heel where they join, I just seam that up. And that's super simple and straightforward. And it doesn't have to be neat because we're gonna felt this. So it's gonna be agitated and things are gonna like mush together. So it doesn't even have to be like pretty seeming or anything like just quick and dirty get it done whip stitch that puppy together and we'll go all right you'll see what I mean so the gray one that I'm going to be using gray yarn for that you'll see first that will follow the pattern and then I'm using some lamb's pride bulky for and it's kind of a brownish and I'll verify when we make the switch you'll see what I mean not to worry. Okay, the other thing I want to say is that YouTube has this cool new feature now where if you kind of hover along the progress bar on the, the playing, you know where it shows how many minutes the video is and how many minutes are left, you'll see different chapters or different segments. And I can write the description in such a way that those different segments will show up. So if you're knitting well, along with the pattern or you're knitting my version, you can skip ahead based on those chapter segments. So that's a super cool feature that YouTube rolled out a couple of months ago. So I'm gonna employ that in the video description here. So it makes it easier for you to click ahead or back on the appropriate segments that you need. Okay, before we get started, I wanna give a hearty welcome to five new patrons. We had a whole bunch of people join in August towards the end of the month and also earlier in the month, but our five most recent patrons I wanna thank personally. So a big shout out and a welcome to Paula, Donna, Liz, Susan, and Amber. Thanks so much for joining me over on Patreon. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, you can see what benefits I'm offering for a small monthly pledge over at patreon.com forward slash pearl together. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm just starting with a simple long tail cast on holding the yarn double as indicated in the pattern. Now, it's okay if you end up having a big tail left over, not to worry, mine's probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches, but that's okay because I'm I'm not gonna do this over in order to conserve yarn because I'm actually gonna use this uh, to sew up the center seam of the sole later on, and you'll see what I mean in a little while. So don't, don't stress about that if you have a little bit longer tail, we will use it and it's totally fine. So be sure of your yardage, holding things double, be sure to double count your cast on, all of those little preventative tips just to make sure you're doing things correctly. Okay, now the only real issue I have with this beginning of this pattern is right away, um, you're gonna do, if you're knitting a women's size and you're going to row one right away and you're not knitting that foundational row, you're gonna start with a knit one, make one. So the way the pattern asks you to make one is by lift, doing a bar increase or lifting up that center strand 
between the two stitches. So you knit one, but there's on your first cast on row, it's pretty awkward to lift up. That's the tail, and there isn't really a center strand. So in order to do that, make one increase. Let me pull the tail through. I just go ahead and knit through the back loop of this first stitch rather than trying to lift anything. Uh, you do what works best for you, but there's my knit one, make one. And I've knitted the prescribed number of stitches across the to the middle here, and now we want to make one, knit one, make one. So this is just going to increase the toe area of the sole a little bit. So when it asks us to make one, again, the pattern tells you to lift the bar between the stitches and then and then knit into the back of that to twist that a little bit. So that is a little bit awkward in the beginning, but then we're gonna make one and we're gonna lift that center bar again. You've got the base of your cast on row right there, and then you have that center bar. So the instructions tell you to go in with your left hand working needle into the front, and then it knit into the back of that loop to do your increase. Okay, so that was knit one, make one, knit one. Now we're gonna knit across a whole bunch more and do the wrap and turn. I'll show you specifically how to do that if you're a newer knitter and you haven't done a wrap and turn before, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a way to make short rows. Now, if you've been talking like me and you don't know where you are and how many across, um, see how that's a little bit slanty and it's not straight, like a straight horizontal purl bump like these stitches? That was my increase. That's the one that I lifted. So there's my knit one, make one, knit one, and then I've knitted five since then. So now I'm to the point in row one where I've come upon the abbreviation WNT, which is simply wrap and turn. So all that means is that we're going to wrap this next stitch around the, the uh, base of it without knitting it, and we're going to turn our work and knit back the other direction. So we're creating a short row, which will increase the thickness just in the center part of the sole, uh, but not on the ends. So you'll see why that needs to be in a minute. So we're just going to slip the next stitch as if to purl, bring the yarn forward, and then slip that stitch back. So all we've done is wrap the base of that stitch and given it a little scarf. Then turn your work and knit back the prescribed number of stitches until we need to do that again. Okay, let's say here you get interrupted, the phone rings or your kids interrupt you or your husband interrupts you or your wife or whatever, and you need to set this down and then you come back and you forget where you were and how many have I knitted since I did the wrap and turn. So as you know, I'm all about learning to read your knitting. You can tell which is the stitch that's wrapped because see how these have that normal purl bump, that horizontal bump right there? Two things, this, there's a big, there's a gap right here. You can see this extra gap and how we wrapped the bottom of this stitch and it drew it closer to its neighbor. So the other thing is you can tell that that's, that stitch has been wrapped around the base it's closer to this one. So I've knitted six since I did the wrap stitch. All right, I've reached the point where I need to do a second wrap and turn on row one. And I realized earlier when I said this increases the thickness, that might be a little confusing. What I mean to say is if you look at this, the thickness I mean width, not like thickness of the yarn or thickness of the fabric that we're creating here, but I mean the width. So here you still only have one row of knitting or actually, yeah. And then here, you've got a couple of rows of knitting. So you can see that this section of the sole is much wider than this one. And that's going to increase some more as we wrap and turn again, do another short row and go back the other way. So if you're not sure what I mean by short row, all that means is that this row is cut short. I'm not knitting all the way to the end. So that's all that term refers to. So again, we're going to slip this stitch purlwise to the right hand working needle and bring your yarn to the front and then slip it back over and turn your work. So that's all, wrap and turn. So that just creates that extra collar or that extra wrap along the base of this stitch. So then we're gonna knit back uh, however many we should for the size you're doing, and then we'll do another series of increases and make ones, okay? So again, you're talking and you need to read your knitting to see how many you've done. You can tell that there's a gap here and this is the stitch you've wrapped which draws it closer to its neighbor. So that's the wrapped one, and I've knitted two, three, four, five, six since I did the wrap. Now we're gonna do some little um, increases. We're actually in the center now, and we're gonna do some increases to widen the toe area a little bit. Now again, the pattern calls for a lifted bar increase, and they want you to go in to the front, lift that center bar, and then knit into the back loop of that. Um, if you can't seem to get your needle into there, I do this thing where I kinda of put the needle in front because it's obviously wide and easy, and then I roll my needles around each other and knit into the back loop like that. So that's a make one, knit one, 
and make one. The other thing I do instead of picking up that bar and I just find it faster and easier and it's perfectly acceptable for a felted garment like this because this is all going to get mashed and smushed and felted together is I grab, I just grab the pearl bump. I just grab the pearl bump and I knit right into that as if it's a stitch. So you do whatever works best for you. I just got in the habit of doing that and it's faster for me. Um, but that again, that's not what the pattern says. So that was a knit one, make one, knit one, which I think I should have knitted two in between there, but I was talking. So I needed to make one. I can tell that's the make one because it's slanty. That pearl bump isn't straight horizontal like these others. That's the make one. I need to knit two in the middle and then make one again with your preferred method. So I'll go ahead and do it the way the pattern indicates just for the sake of continuity and the ease of reading your knitting. Okay, just a note again, I'm at the end of row one and I need to do one more increase at the end of this row. And so if I'm gonna do the lifted bar thing, I can go down here and try to separate that. Um, I think that's kind of a pain. So I just am gonna knit through the back loop of this to do my one increase. So you do what works best for you. Um, I just I don't like doing the lifted bar thing on the very end of of the row. I think it's it's difficult um, if you have if you're just starting out. You've only got your cast on row as the foundation. So okay, I think you should be good to carry on through the rest of the sole. Just make sure to count your stitches periodically, particularly if you have a big stretch of you know 30 or more stitches across here then you're going to wrap and turn. You might want to double check that you've got that right before you do the wrap and turn. Otherwise you'll end up knitting. Uh, you know, through the end of the row and your stitch count is not going to match what the pattern indicates. So it's always good to ounce of prevention and all that to double check. Okay, so I'll show you what the sole looks like when I'm done with mine. Okay, I've just finished row six, which is the completion of the inner sole. And you want to check at this point to make sure you have the correct number of stitches. Absolutely, that's important because we're going to change colors now and we're going to build the top of the foot or the other contrasting color if you're choosing to do that uh, from these stitches. So what I want to show you though is this is how this is going to go together. So you're going to turn it, this is the center of your stitches and this is the this is the sole. So like I mentioned before this section is is has more rows because of those short rows we did with the wrap and turns than does the the bottom or the heel part. So this was the one I showed you on camera, and then this is a second sole that I have going for a different pair. Now this is the same same thing, same situation, but I'm knitting this out of bulky yarn, that's single ply. It's also a lamb's pride, but it's the bulky. So the reason I'm doing two different ones here is that I'm going to show you how I knit. One of them I'll show you how I knit according to the pattern, and the other I'll show you how I knit it back and forth if you don't have the uh, a convenient length of cable to either do it in a round or a magic loop. Thanks for joining me to get started on your clogs so you can knit the inner sole this weekend. If you are done with that and it didn't take you very long and you wanna jump ahead, you can put that first sole on waist yarn and do number two, do it for your second clog if you want. Or if you happen to have a second set of size 13 needles, then go ahead and start slipper number two on the second set of needles. I will see you next Tuesday and we'll start on the next section, which is the top of the foot. And that will be where it's important to differentiate between following the pattern in the round or doing the back and forth way that I'll show you supplementally. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching.